丽美。If I got a fight to get you in the gym, that's a problem. That's a problem. You want players that are gym rats, players that want to be in the gym, that want to work, and then from there you build on top of that. But if you're lazy, man, I don't want to talk to you. I want to deal with you. You don't make me feel dumber. You know, <laughs> you know, you're gonna lower my level. I don't think so. You can go over there. <laughs> This guy is the best. How does that make you feel? I know you're kind of chuckling now because we can joke about it, but. You're the best player in the nation for anybody in high school. It feels good. It's great confidence, but you have to keep moving on. So I know a lot of guys who've been number one in the past years, and it just, just like, just fell off a cliff. Mm -hmm. So I have to keep working hard, and uh, hopefully everything will work out. I'll be number one in the future. So I'm going to continue to work hard, and uh, we as a team are going to continue to work hard as an organization the same way. We continue to push and push until we get back to that top. You start with, what do you want your game to be? What would make your game most unstoppable or hard to deal with? And now you work backwards from there, and you start building it one piece at a time, one move at a time, one counter at a time. So there's a lot. We flew back to LA that night, and I got home. It's probably like three in the morning, and I went down to the high school, which is down the street from our house. And the janitor let me in the gym, and I shot all day. All day, I mean, all day. And this was right after that playoff game, and um, I didn't leave the gym. I just kept shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting and practicing and practicing. And uh, I got a chance to let out the steam of disappointing my teammates and millions of fans. I got a chance to let all that out instead of bottling it up. And envision that moment over and over and over and over and over. That that was a huge summer for me because I I,、um, I felt like everybody had written me off after those air balls, and I was really excited when the schedule came out and I saw we had Utah. Kobe, I read a couple days ago where you wanted to slow down the pace of your workout routine. Is that because you're in hopes of possibly getting some preseason games in, or you want to be healthy for the season opener? Well, I just try to listen to my body. You know, just kind of listen to it. We have a great staff here, and、uh, you know, we just work hand in hand and just listen to how how my body feels, and、uh, just try to respond accordingly.、Uh, we used to have an All American camp that I used to go to, and you know, at the time I first showed, I was a sophomore, and、um, one of the things I would do is everybody would be at the cafeteria, work, you know, eating and doing all sorts of stuff. I just go back to the gym. I just go back to the gym. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's, they'd be know, resting, they'd be resting, and, and they'd see me leave. Right, but now you're in a tough position because you're like, okay, I want to be like I'm following the kid to go work、right. out, but I know he's working, he's up early, and he's doing all this、wow. other stuff, and so that was my way of sh of showing them, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, maybe from the suburbs, but you're not going to outwork me. Wow. And I'm mentally going to. Did someone teach you that? We really seem to, you know, have bonded and understand that. You know, if we want to get to that elite level, we really have to put in the work day in and day out. Well, with that, but I, I've worked extremely hard this summer to be able to play at a high level,、uh, regardless of the minute. Right? If it's 30, if it's 48, I'm prepared to do whatever's necessary, and that's that's my job to do so. Yeah, my parents were were great. You know, growing up, you know, they instilled in me the importance of imagination, of curiosity, and understanding that okay, if you want to accomplish something. I'm not just going to sit here and say yes. You can do whatever you want.、Mm -hmm. Yes, you can, but you have to also put in the work to get there, right? So they taught me that at a really early age, man. And、uh, when you grow up as a kid, thinking that the world is your oyster, all things are possible if you put in the work to do it. 
you, know, you grew up having that fundamental belief. One of your uh, high school friends said, uh, when I was partying, he was playing basketball. When I was waking up, Kobe was playing basketball before class. How would you describe your dedication to the sport even back then? Well, I, I tried to find a balance, right? I tried to do both. You know, I, I had a great deal of energy. So um, if there was a school party going on or something like that, I mean, I, I'd play basketball for a few hours. You know, I'd do what I have to do and have fun doing it. And then you know, I'd go to the party. And I'd show up, I'd have a good time, have fun. And I'd be up at five o'clock in the morning, you know, working out, working out and you know, training the next day. So I, I tried to try to do both. 40 point games, 60 point games in three quarters. So talk about what led up to the big monster 81 point game. Well, it was, you know, a thousand makes a day in the summertime, you know, and going through things you know, just as I would during the game. So, you know, I, I knew exactly where my positions were within the triangle and where, where the shots would be coming from. So everything that I did throughout the course of my training was literally simulating that. So it was all game shots. So when it came in the game, things were just automatic because I'd put my body through it before. You know, sometimes you get in the gym and you work out and you work on ball handling, you work on shooting, but none of it's really within a structure of what you will be doing in the game. Mm -hmm. For me, it wasn't like that. It was literally carbon copy of what I'd be doing. So it, by the time the season came around, it was all just muscle memory. I understand you know, there's different levels of focus and commitment to a craft. I, I get that completely. If guys want to go out and have a good time, I get that completely. However, you're going to do that and you show up to work the next day, you better be ready, right? If you're gonna do that, you better come to practice and you better be ready to go. And if you're not, then I'm gonna, gonna let you know. And you know, I think the message was sent pretty, pretty clearly. Rest at the end, not in the middle. And that's something I always live by. You know? Yeah, we're gonna work hard. You know, that's what training camp's about, preseason's about, is working hard, getting in shape, getting in condition. And uh, not so much about the games, but just, you know, the game is just another way to kind of you know, get your exercise, get your win, get your rhythm. Uh, so we're pushing it in practice all week. But, uh, you know, I was able to focus on the game. Uh, you know, a lot of the credit goes to my wife for not only putting up with it, but supporting my work ethic. You know, because I work all day consistently. And you know, she's supporting me, and um, you know, a lot of credit goes to her. But it's, it's simple. Like, if you do the math on this, right? Like, if, you, if you're thinking about how often kids are playing, mm -hmm. right? And I tell this to my, to my daughter and my daughter's team as well that I coach. So it's a simple thing of math. If you want to be a great player, if you play every single day, two, three hours, every single day, over the course of a year, how much better are you getting? Most kids will play maybe, you know, an hour and a half, two days a week. Right. Put the math on that. It's not, it's, not going, that. it's not going to get it done. <laughs> it's not going to get it done. Right. So if you're obsessive, obsessive, obsessively training two, three hours every single day over a year, over two years, you're accelerating. You make quantum leaps, man. Just doing a If I could work that hard every day, um, with the being blessed with the physical tools that I have, um, what would my career be? And I made a promise to myself from that day that I was going to work that hard every single day, so that when I do retire, I have no regrets. And that was the most important thing for me: is to leave no stone unturned get better every single day. And if I live that way, then over time, you know, I'd have something that was beautiful. But that was my philosophy. It seems like a pretty simple one, but you know, if you live your life to just get better every single day and do that for 20 years, I mean, what do you have? The kids are running. They've been running for two hours. Running, running, running. This one kid misses the line by like half inch. No, it wasn't even half inch. It was like about that much. Yeah, like, he misses the line. Me. Kobe's like, stop, 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 stop. We had to stop. We had to stop everything. And he's like, nobody gets shoes. And all these kids are like, oh, they're mad at the kid. Yeah. They're like, touch the line. All you gotta do is touch the line. That's it. It was this much. Touch the line. And and you know, Kobe's like, no, nobody, nobody gets shoes. You guys sit on the sideline. And then Kobe made this kid run suicides, which is another drill. Baseline, free throw line, baseline, half court, baseline, opposite free throw line, baseline, baseline, and back. Three in a row. Three times. <laughs> you had to run three of them. Yeah. But, but the, the best message. part was, oh. the best part was, uh, the last one, Kobe ran with this kid. He ran with this kid. Okay. Yeah. It's awesome. He ran with this kid. And 
there's a mil- 1.1 million people are watching online. Crazy. He went with this kid. This kid was dry heaving. He was about to die. Yeah. But you you're know, lucky he didn't die. No, he's, he wasn't going to die. He wasn't going to die. <laughs> but but the, the important thing to understand is you can't you can't shortchange yourself. Like you're not you're not cheating anybody but yourself. Right? I mean, you're tired. You're literally this far away from the line. Why would you not go that extra to touch the line? Right. So if I let him get away with that, right, all of a sudden he starts maybe a cheat something over here. Right. Not give his best over here. Not give his best over here. And as years go on, he's going to be extremely, he's not going to reach his full potential because he's been taking these little shortcuts that just add up, add up, add up, add up, add up. And you can't let that happen. Our our job as teachers, as mentors, as inspirers, it's our responsibility to hold them accountable to those things. Pressure is a funny thing. You know, I always felt like the people that feel pressure are the people that cut corners or really didn't put the work in. If you know you've put in all the work, what is there to be nervous about? You've done it thousands of times before. You just go up there and do it one more time. Really a question of what side of the fence do you want to be on? <laughs> you know, do you want to be nervous in those situations or do you not want to be nervous in those situations? Do you want to look at pressure as a normal sport occurrence like breathing is to every single day of your life? Then you put in the work. And if you don't, Man, that's on you. I think the best way to prove your, your value is to work, is to learn, is to absorb, um, to be a sponge. Right? But you always want to outwork your potential. You know, as hard as you believe you can work, you can work harder than that. And that's what I tried to do when I first came in the league. But you know, basketball is such a direct competition sport that me coming in at 17, I hated when like my teammates would say, you know, I get hit with an elbow, right? Shaq would hit me with an elbow in practice. And like, you know, <laughs> Nick Van Exel would come up and say, are you okay? I'm like, what the fuck, what? <laughs> hey, Ma, are you okay? <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? You know, so like, I always had that extra chip on my shoulder. So like every day in practice for me was really trying to annihilate everybody that, was, that I was playing against. Cause I wanted to prove you don't need to babysit me. Like, I, I'm fine, <laughs> you know? Well, because you just focus on the day that you're playing. That, I mean, it's as simple as that. Like, wh- whatever you're doing in that moment, that's what you're doing. That's your sole focus. So you don't think about, you know, I have to do this for another year, or I have to do this for another two months. Just think about that moment. What are you doing at that moment in time? You focus on 100%. That happens to me, like, when I'm running, when I'm working out, I'm, I'm running. And I do a lot of work on the track, and I'm running and I'm really tired, but the finish line is all the way on the other side. And if I look at where I have to run, I get even more tired. So what I do is I just look down. I just look down, I just look at my feet just moving. And then you ne- the next thing you know, I look up and I'm crossing the finish line. Well, well, well uh, sorry to digress for a second, but how does an air ball feel good? I just want to know. You know, because you know what? I, I want to know that no, 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 that's a really good <laughs> question, but you know, like sometimes, you shoot the ball and you release it, and the trajectory feels good, your follow-through is good. It's right there on target, it's in line, you're keeping the follow-through up in the air, and then it goes short. Mm-hmm. But it feels good. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's kind of like a shock to miss those sometimes. Now, after that experience, obviously that weighs very heavily on your mind, but ultimately, Kobe Bryant works on this game. Sha- Shaquille O'Neal is right there in the house with you to begin with. Your game is elevated to another level. What did you do to get your game to that level specifically? For those out there, I mean, we got a whole bunch of basketball kids in the house. Yeah. No, what did you well, do to get your game to that level? The prime example is uh, I've, had, I've had a trainer, the same trainer has been training for the last 10 years, named mm-hmm. Joe Carbone. And after I shot those air balls, you know, I sat there and I, I thought, you know, as soon as we got down the plane, went back to L.A. that night, he and I met, and we went through the whole season, our training regimen. And the thing that we came down to was that our conditioning program needed to be adapted. We needed to change it. All right, give it to me quick. What you do? And don't well, think we, I'm just we, listening just for the along, television show. All summer long, we worked in our conditioning with the track. We did Olympic lifts. We went out there on the basketball court. And we did that, those three things, in one day. And we did that all summer long. We broke them up in cycles. Uh, because at the end of the game, even though the shots felt good, the truth of the matter is, my legs were tight. I wasn't ready. And so, what am I going to have to do now to get ready? So next time I'm in that position, I'm going to make those shots. Is that what you still do to this day? Oh, absolutely. I'm always asking why, you know, why didn't this work out? Okay, why did this work out? Mm-hmm. You know, how can I make this better? How can I make that better? So I'm always asking those questions to improve. I think that's when the idea of understanding a long-term view became important. 
because I wasn't going to catch these kids in a week. I wasn't going to catch them in a year, right? So that's when I sat down and said, okay, this is going to take some thought, all right? Mm -hmm. What do I want to work on first? All right, shooting, all right, let's knock this out. Let's focus on this half a year, six months, do nothing but shoot. Right after that, all right, creating your own shot. And you focus. So you start. I started creating a menu of things. Mm. When I came back the next summer, I was a little bit better. Right. And a I menu being back, like I've got my jump shot from 15. I've got my yeah. I got my jump away, shot from I've 15. Got my, I got my three point shot. Like just open shots, not miss open shots. Right. right. Be able to shoot it with speed because those kids are so much more athletic. Yeah. And then the next summer I came back I was a little better. And the summer came back. You the scored. Next summer I was a little better. I scored. Yeah, you know, it wasn't much, right. but I scored. And this you know? is 12, 13. 12, 13. And then 14 came around, back half of 13, 14 uh, years old. And then I was just killing everyone. And it happened in two years. And I wasn't expecting it to happen in two years, but it did because what I had to do was work on the basics and the fundamentals. Well, they relied on their athleticism mm. and their natural ability. And because I stick to the fundamentals, it just caught up to them. And then my body, you know, my knees stopped hurting. I grew into my frame. And, and then your athleticism, once you have the fundamentals, exactly. the hard work, the mindset, and you tack on the athleticism, exactly. it's then, game then, over. Then, then it was game over. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Very flexible. Face coat. Hey, one, it's one, it's one, it's one. So you, you, move, one. you move with it. Also, to gun the, gun the, uh, the strength and flexibility and the, and the strength and acceptance. Like in my game now, I could say, you know, I want to be able to jump as high as I used to. I want to be able to be as fast as I used to. I have to be. No, I don't jump as high as I used to. That's okay. I'm not as fast as I used to be. That's okay too. I'll figure out another way to do it. I just really wanted to get stronger because I saw that as a untapped potential uh, for myself. I felt like I, throughout the years since I've been in the league, I, I've been getting stronger uh, every summer. And this summer, I felt like it was the time to really make that leap. Um, because I was knocking on the doorstep of, of, of becoming more of a, of a power guard. Triangle? We are. We are. We, we are, are running the triangle. We absolutely are. And they execute it beautifully. No kidding. Beautifully. I, I was messing with Phil. So the first okay. time we ran the triangle, right. we ran a center opposite action. Mm -hmm. And he ran it beautifully, got a beautiful open three, knocked it down. So uh -huh. I sent the video to Phil. Phil was like, is that center opposite? They actually mm -hmm. ran it. And I said, yes, because they got a better coach. Nice. <laughs> I like it. He just thought, he, how, he was awesome. How old are they now? 12. So they're 12. So 12. you're running with 12 year olds. Yeah. Are you giving them reading material for 12 year olds? No, no. Are you just, doing that film? What, what, I, what I've learned is like, uh, um, it's you have to think clearly in how you teach it. You just go piece by piece. Like it's my responsibility to try to teach them the game and teaching the fundamentals of the game, most importantly, right? Passing mm -hmm. with the left hand, right? understand spacing, being able to shoot the ball properly, finish at the rim properly, just basics, right? Instead of throwing them everything at once, you just break it up month to month. So are you, do you find yourself using Phil-isms with the kids? Like, I, you know, I do. But I started doing that even later in my career. Um, you know, a lot of his philosophies, a lot of things that he's taught me um, have really shaped who I am, mm -hmm. and uh, that's why I think he's the greatest coach because he impacted me not just from a basketball perspective, but you know, as a person too. So give me an example. What does he? What does he love to the, the patience. I mean, you remember me when I was younger. It was like, yo, do this, do it now. Let's go. Why right. aren't you getting this? Come right. on, let's go. Right. As opposed to now sitting back and allowing things to materialize and allowing um, people and uh, to develop and find their own way mm -hmm. and be there simply as a guiding force which helps me a lot in the coaching of my, my kids' team, uh, helps me in storytelling a lot as well. For the podcasts of what you got out there now, you're talking yes. about like when, when the stories are written for these children's podcasts, the punies, you're, are you going over the copy? Are you like actually looking through what's being well, written? Yeah, so like what I, what I did is, um, when the idea of the show first came to me, I had the two characters already created, which was Puny Pete and BB LaBelle. Mm -hmm. And I'd written 10 short stories for them. And my idea was to have them have individual uh, picture books with short stories. Um, but then we have a family tradition where we watch The Sandlot every 4th of July. And, uh, the Sandlot, the Sandlot every 4th every of, of July. We watch The Sandlot as a family. And after watching The Sandlot, I was like, man, we need more movies like this, you know, for kids. And just in a park and having fun. Uh -huh. So I started kind of coming up with ideas and concepts and nothing really stuck. Um, and then in Thanksgiving, our other tradition is watching The Peanuts, you know, Thanksgiving special. Sure, right. And so when I was watching that, it, it, those two things just came together for me. It was like, huh, I got it. Puny Pete, BB LaBelle come together. This is gonna be, you know, I'm gonna mix the Sandlot and the, and, uh, and the Peanuts. And 
create our own series. Well, it's interesting, you know, listening to uh, some of the episodes of this podcast, the opening theme, when I heard it, it sounded like the Peanuts theme. Yeah, Is that on our, purpose? That's our homage um, to the Peanuts and Schultz and what they, what they were able to create. And I feel like in this day and age for children, the music is, is very, it's very pop. You know, there's all, there's all, all of that. There, there's no classic music anymore mm -hmm. of strong piano themes and strong uh, melody themes. And so we wanted to kind of go back to, way, to the way shows used to be. So when it all comes down to it, um, you want to do what with your second career here well, at Kobe? We, you know, what we want to do is use sports as the greatest metaphor for life. And if we feel, we feel like if we can teach kids how to deal with anxiety, how to deal with pressure, how to deal with failure, how to deal with success through sport, then it in turn it helps them to become better people, right? So like if you're struggling with something, if your kid's struggling with a bully at school or struggling with taking tests because the pressure is just too much, how do you practice that? Like as a, as a, as a father, you, you can go to your, your daughter and your son and say, okay, you know, work your hardest, um, don't worry about the end result. But those are just words, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Right? They have to physically put themselves, emotionally put themselves in that same situation over and over to really be able to understand how to deal with it. And what we're saying is that sports does that for you. So now through sport, when you practice every day and you're playing these games and you have these emotional challenges, you get used to figuring out how to navigate yourself through which in turn helps you to become a better test taker and vice versa. I had Jeannie Buss on my show last week. She said that you sent her um, a text when LeBron came to the Lakers yeah. of her as the mother of dragons. You sent her a Khaleesi, a Khaleesi photograph <laughs> to her did. phone. I did, I did. What was your intention on I that? did, I sent her a, <laughs> a gif of Khaleesi riding in on Thousand ships behind her with uh, Tyrion next to her and everyone right. next to her. So I said, this is what you are. I mean, when I spoke to her about making her decision, I told her, I said, at some point, Jeannie, you have to become Khaleesi. You got to be the mother of dragons. The you decision claim, with, her, with her family yeah, you're talking yeah, about? You got to claim what is rightfully yours and go for it, man. So I, I felt like that was appropriate to send her that, that gift. Well, she's, now she kind of does <laughs> sit on that iron throne, I guess, to use yeah. that phrase, yeah. with LeBron coming here. Uh, what is your relationship? With LeBron, I okay. talked to him the the day um, it was announced. I talked to him and just reached out to him and said, "Welcome to LA." And I said, "Now you're a part of the family. So if you ever need anything whatsoever, just know where to find me, man. I'm right here." And uh, it's excited for him. Are you aware that there are some of your diehard fans that have an issue with LeBron being termed as part of the family? Kobe? Yeah, I, I hear that, but it, you know, listen. If you're a fan of mine, you're a fan of winning. You're a fan of the Lakers. Right, I bleed purple and gold, so that's above anything else. I've been a Laker fan since I was yay high. Mm -hmm. That's never going to change, right? And uh, we're about winning championships, so they'll, they'll fall in line. What do you think um, he needs to accomplish here in order to be viewed in a similar vein as, say, you as a Laker, Kobe? Well, I don't know. The, making the comparisons of <clears throat> him being viewed in a similar vein as me, I mean, that doesn't make much sense, right? I mean, I, you know, I think the goal is always to win championships. No matter where you go, that's the goal. And that's his goal, that's Rob's goal, that's Magic's goal, that's Jeannie's goal, Rondo, all the guys, Kuzma, Lonzo, they all want to win championships, man. So that's what they're gunning for. So he he needs to win a championship here? In LA? Why do people do why do people always say that? They say, okay, well you need to win. And then then there's this this like crowd of people that are like, well, you don't need to win a championship. Well, you're asking me, we have to win championships. This is why we play, this is why we're here, is to win championships. And, you know, he wouldn't have came here if he, if he didn't expect to win championships. Well, I mean, I'm of the mindset that his legacy as one of the all-time greats is already sealed. Yeah. I mean, that that's well, kind of, he's already done that. Well, yeah. <laughs> you, would agree, you would agree with that assessment, yeah. obviously, right? Yeah. So now he's coming to Los Angeles, and in a way, He's trying to next level achieve with something you already have, which is Laker championships, plural, and maybe an Oscar in the trophy case yeah. also. Well, it's, to me, it's just really simple. Wherever you play, the object is to win championships. That's it. End of story. End of story. Professional basketball, how often do you think about that these days? Uh, I mean, every so often, but not, not much. I mean, I think about it for... Um, you know, a lot of the players reach out and they want to come out and work out and do some things like that. So I have guys come down and 
and I'll work with him. Who's come? Who's Jason's been? been Jason's been down. Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum's been down. Uh, Kuzma's been down. I uh, have a couple more in the books coming down later in the summer. What do you do with them? What do you do um, with these guys? Well, no, the first thing to do is self-assess. Right? What, what do you feel comfortable doing on the court? What you don't feel comfortable doing? And it starts with that. You got to be able to look inside and say, okay, your coaches can only tell you but so much. You know what you can and can't do, and you have to be honest about it. And so once we get to that, then it's okay, well, let's put you through it. How does Kuzma look to you? Dude, he looks great, man. He looks great. He's got good rhythm. Um, he has the ability to disassociate movements, mm -hmm. right, which gives him a fluidity when he plays. Um, but he can shoot the ball. He's worked on his mid-range game, game a lot. Post-up game looks strong. So looking forward to him having a good year. Man. How often do you give your thoughts on the current Laker roster to, say, your former agent? Every, every time Rob calls me. Okay. <laughs> you, you offer something up to him? Well, yeah. I mean, look, Rob and I have been friends forever. Mm -hmm. He's godfather to Gianna. And, um, so we'll, we'll talk, man. And I'll, sometimes I'll call just to check him and see how he's doing. Mm -hmm. You know, because like, you know, when I played during the season, he'd have to pick up for me with my family. Because I'd miss, for example, Halloween, Christmas. Sure. And so he'd go out with my family and stuff. And when so, he was your agent. When he was my agent. And okay. so now it's just kind of reverse. So when he's out on the road, I'll spend time with his family and take him out trick-or-treating and all that good stuff. What do you think of Rondo's uh, presence here with Lonzo Ball and him? Is there, you think, a competition in the backcourt? No, I think there's a lot to be learned from. I mean, Rondo's a student of the game. How he studies the game, I think mm -hmm. it's something that Lonzo can learn from. You know, you know, Rondo will sit there and watch film for hours and hours and hours and hours and dissect and pick things apart to the smallest of detail. And I think it's important for Lonzo to see that. Also, how he facilitates the game, how he reads things happening before they actually happen, how you can manipulate the defense to make things happen. And also defensively, he gets after you. Mm -hmm. So I think it's great. When I spoke to Jeannie, she said that she would have you do anything you'd like for the Lakers franchise. Has she communicated that to you? Yeah. Okay, she has. Yeah. Uh, even a rumor that you might consider even maybe coming out of retirement <laughs> to play <laughs> one more time for the Lakers. Right. I see you're laughing. Yeah. There's nothing to that, right? There's about a 0% chance that I come back and play. So not even like a? Nothing. Zero. You're toast. You're finished. Done. As a player. That's it. Did last year at any point with you going through your first season not yeah. playing basketball? Never. Not once did you Never. think about it? Never. Here's the thing is for us athletes, it's really hard to transition from that. Right? And I was really personal about it when I wrote Dear Basketball. But that is the true challenge of finding what comes next and finding something that you love to do every bit as much as you love your first passion. That is a challenge for us. And I think, unfortunately for us athletes, we've been pigeonholed into thinking that we can only be one thing. And so when I retired, everybody is saying, okay, he's too competitive. He's not gonna know what to do with himself. He's gonna have to come back. I took that as a personal challenge of them thinking I'm this one dimensional person. That all I know is how to dribble the ball, shoot the ball and play basketball and compete at that level. And so I took it as a personal challenge. I will never come back to the game, ever. I'm here to show people that we can do much more than that. And creating this business, winning an Oscar, winning the Emmy and the Annie, those are things that are showing other athletes that come after, no, no, there's more to this thing, right? So I would never, it's not even a, not even a thought. So the, geek, the goal was an EGOT? You want the Emmy, the Grammy, the Oscar, no, the, know, Tony, the, the I mean, challenge, that... The challenge became, how do I take the lessons that I learned through the game of basketball and translate them into building the studio, right? What are the things that I can take from that? The discipline, um, the commitment, uh, the team and community. How do you get the best out of each other? How do I take those lessons and move those here? Um, that is the challenge. How do we do great work, uncompromising great work? You're not looking at the bottom line. We focus on the product first, right? Is this the best thing that we can possibly make no matter what? And having that sharp focus is something that I got from the game of basketball. So then how, what, what, podcasts, I mean, how for children? What, how do you choose your projects? How, how does that process go for you? Well, I, I just, uh, you know, I'll sit and I'll think and I'll create. You know, I, I write them all out um, and uh, create the characters, create the rules, the structure. Um, and, and then you kind of got to go with your gut. You got to go with your gut and see, are we creating something that's been done before? Or is this a project, something that nobody's seen before? Mm -hmm. And uh, is it a project that we're not sure that we can do? And if the answer is yes, then nine times out of 10, we're going for that one, right? Because that means we're pushing boundaries a little bit. 
Um, so that's how I generally pick them. Do you ever want to act? No. No. I, I love creating. I love creating, I love directing, I love producing. I don't love acting. I don't love being in front of the camera. I like trying to figure out if the arc of the story is the right one. Sure. Are you taking pitches? No. You don't take pitches? No. Nope. Nobody's pitching Kobe Bryant a story? No, we don't take pitches. Like we're, we're, we're a very focused company. Like We have our projects that slate out five years. We know exactly what we're releasing from now to five years from now. And when we're releasing them and how they have a domino effect from books to film to Broadway, we have very specific goals huh. and things that we want to accomplish. So we're very, very focused on those. And all the projects are created in-house. So coming to you with my Dear TV idea, that's that's out. That's not happening. I mean, if I ever need for you to write Well, TV, you kind of just me. slipped it in there right now. So I, I'll take that as a pitch. Well, I mean, no, it's just, I, I'm not done with my career. You gotcha. know what I'm saying? At some point. Dear TV. Know, dear TV. Listen, I, I can always... You know, dust off it's the okay pen. if you don't like it, Kobe. It's fine, it's fine. brother. I listen, can handle. You, I can, I can handle dust it. off the pen and edit it for you. You write it, send it to me. I'll, I'll edit send it. it for oh, you. You'll, you'll, I will you'll absolutely red it. notes. You'll circle. I will. Okay. And in I the will. meantime, you're just going to be coaching. I'll be like, this one. <laughs> this one. <laughs> that one's real. No. I'm just wow. <laughs> I feel now. I, I'm getting the sense of understanding. You said you're more patient now. What happened to the patience, Kobe? No, what I'm saying it in my head as I'm editing it. When I give it back to you, I'll go. You know, I think. There's another level that you can reach. Okay. Wouldn't you agree? Well, yes, I, I agree with that. See, is that so outward? Let, let's, let's, got it. let's focus on being our best self. Okay. And yeah. then in the meantime, you're just going to coach. You're coaching your daughters. Yeah, I am. Fantastic. Yeah, it's and, fun, man. and that's what, twice a week, three times a week? Is that what it no, is? No, every day. Every day. Every day. Is there a uh, a, a Lavar type parent that you're dealing with? No, for, no. Really fortunately, for? all of our parents are very patient and just kind of hands okay. off with their children. No one's going to just take their kids to Lithuania. No, you? no, Is no, that no, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Really, mate.